May I speak in the name of the Creator, Redeemer and Sustainer. Amen. I'm not sure everyone would have got this message before the service, but I wondered if you could think about someone who's inspired you in your life, someone who has really encouraged you, maybe the way you live, maybe about your faith. It may have been a person um, that you read about or someone you've seen on telly, or it may be within your own family, maybe your parents or your grandparents or an influential person in your life that's actually really encouraged you. You've looked at them and you said to yourself, I want to be like them. I want to be able to be the sort of person they are. So I want you to think of that in the background um, whilst I talk about people that inspire us. And today is All Saints Day. And so we, we remember the saints who have gone before us. They're usually people who have practiced the faith to the point that they've been willing to die for their faith. And often they have died for their faith. They've often been persecuted and it results in their death. They have to choose between being silent or sharing their faith. Um, so they might not have been brilliant people. When we think of saints, we think that they might not be fault have any faults but actually they're not they're ordinary human beings with faults like me and you and yet they found faith to be so important that they were willing to give their lives many of our churches are named after saints this church is st botoff our other church is st james the greater you have other churches named st peter or st paul and they're all people who have lived particular lives and we read about them we're inspired by them we're encouraged by them and we try and follow their example like i said it don't mean to say that they're perfect people so i want you to think about why or who the people are that inspire you and that's why we remember all saints we remember people who inspired us in our faith in one of my previous churches, uh, there was such a lady. She's now been promoted to heaven. That's the way I see it. She's passed on from this world to the next. And she was a great influence in my life. She was one of my church wardens. And she, to me, she really exemplified what faith was all about. We, we, my church was in a, an area of great deprivation and where there was a lot of poverty and um, where there were many refugees and she used to always reach out to those in need she'd help people no matter what their nationality or their background if they needed help she provided it and it always was quietly and in the background she provided food she provided money she provided extra help by going with them if they needed to sort out a problem with an agency she'd go and visit with them and they all regarded her as mum it was an interesting thing to see i remember leading a service once and halfway through one of these refugees arrived to the service late and they'd come they traveled from birmingham um, and they wanted to see her but rather than wait to the end of the service halfway through the service they walked up the aisle and gave her a bunch of flowers halfway through the communion which I thought was wonderful. She was a great inspirer of faith. She told loads and loads of stories about her time uh, when she worked as a nurse in Africa and the sort of people that inspired her. So I, I want you to think if there's people that have inspired you and I want you to write it on your petal, um, the name of the person or people that have inspired you in your life. I've just named one, but there's lots of people that inspire me. There's people in this building now that inspire me, and there's people in my wider life that inspire me even now. And people from the past, Mother Julian and Norwich is one of my favourites that I like to follow. Of course, our great inspiration for the way that we live in our relationship, not just with God, but with each other, is Jesus as well. And today we had the, the reading from the Gospel called the Beatitudes, or the Beautiful Sayings. Um, there was a lovely sermon preached this morning by our reader, Michael Torn, who said there, perhaps we should think of them as be 
attitudes, how to be with one another, how to relate to one another as well as with God. And Jesus is trying to give a framework by which we need to live by. He talks about the poor in spirit and he's saying, blessed are those who are poor in spirit. What he means is if we realise that we need to learn more, we need to know more in order to be good people. Blessed are those who mourn. He's talking not just about those who have lost loved ones, but those who also recognise that they get it wrong in their lives and they're sorry, they mourn in the fact that they didn't get it right. How many of us have made mistakes in the past that we'd like to go back and change? And we mourn those mistakes. We wish we'd not made them. But the Lord says to us, if we recognise those things and want to work towards good, that's a good thing. So blessed are those who are mourn. Blessed are the meek. They're the ones, not just the ones who are gentle with one another, which is important, gentle with each other in our communities and in our lives, but those who are willing to learn, who don't think they know it all already, that we're always open for the Lord to speak to us. Blessed are those who hunger for righteousness. Not hunger in the sense of going without food, although that sort of hunger is what he's speaking about. It's when we really need something. So blessed are those who realise they need God in their lives because they will be satisfied. God will meet their needs. And then it's blessed are the merciful and the pure in heart. This is about the way we treat others. Not only the way we want to be treated ourselves, but to be gentle and forgiving to one another, to be understanding of the stresses that people go through, and to realise that we aren't perfect, just like the saints weren't perfect, but that we're working on it. So therefore, blessed are the peacemakers. And Jesus finishes with the words about persecution, the fact that we may experience persecution for following our faith and that he was persecuted for his faith. And today we remember the saints who were willing to die for their faith. In many parts of the world, people are still dying for their faith. We hear sad, sad news about what's happened in France and the people who are attending church who wasn't expecting to lose their lives because they were Christians. And so there are still places in the world where you can lose your life because of your faith. Blessed are those who will stick with their faith in the face of persecution. So he gives us a rounded view of how to live. He knows that we're not going to get there straight away, that we ha it's a work in progress. But he's trying to encourage us by setting this framework by which we live by. I'm sure the people that you've got on your petal are people that have inspired you, good people that have encourage you to live a good life, a merciful life, an understanding life. And we're going to put all our petals together at the end of the service, uh, and we might have to take a picture and put it on our Facebook, so that we, we put all the petals around to form a flower with God at the centre of the flower. So I'm not sure that anyone, I don't know, does anyone want to share their inspiration person I'm not going to put pressure on you because I know we're live broadcasting but is anyone who wants to share no, I understand ok so I want you to carry on thinking about it because today is all saints to bless those who have blessed you and to share that blessing with others Amen So we're going to sing our next song, Amazing Grace.